Gate Church family, hope all is going well. We're here to celebrate Jesus on our weekend church services, amen? Hey, hopefully this is coming to an end. We're hearing some glimmers of hope out there. So soon, very soon, we're going to be together. Hey, maybe not down here, maybe up in the sky, amen? Well, we're going to open in prayer. We're going to glorify Jesus Christ. Again, the praise and worship is pre-recorded for this service, but the Word of God is fresh, it's alive. We're going to dig into His Word today. So let's open in a word of prayer. Father God, we bless you and thank you for this, this weekend, Lord, that we can glorify Jesus. As long as we're on planet Earth, we're going to glorify Jesus. When we're in heaven, we're going to glorify Jesus. To you be all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead, invite somebody to a watch party. Let's celebrate Jesus today. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more.
Of God. 
presence is here in this place right now. That you're ministering right now to the brokenhearted. You're ministering to those, Lord, that just need to hear you right now. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing this out. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. And the evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. And the evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here.
For the Spirit of the Lord is here And the evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here Oh, come on, church, let's sing this out A miracle can happen now for the Spirit of the Lord is here, and the evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you, Lord Jesus, and we just thank you that you are more than enough. You are the God that loves us, that we can glorify your name in spirit and in truth, Lord, glorifying our Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, this might be different doing this all online, but that's okay, Lord. We've come to magnify the name. Go ahead and get your communion stuff together. We're going to receive communion a little bit. I'm going to first have Reverend Bob come up and pray over the prayer request. So if you have a prayer request, if you want to put it in the comments there, go right ahead. If it's private, just stretch your hands out towards Reverend Bob. And as we pray, we're going to all be in agreement. And then we're going to receive communion together. Go ahead, Bob. Well, Father, we come before you right now, and we lift up the prayer request yes, before Lord. you, Father. We thank you for these requests, Lord God. These requests are important to the people, and they're important to you. Yes, Lord. Father, we lift them up. We thank you that you are the God of healing, that you are the God of provision, yes. that you are the God of everything. And we praise, we bless you, we thank you for what you're doing and what you've done. Yes. We thank you for protecting our first responders, our doctors, our nurses, all those ones that are out there in the front lines right now dealing with this COVID problem. Father, we pray for the president. We pray for the vice president. We pray, Father God, for their whole task force that's out out there. Father, we also thank you for Congress. We thank you, Lord God, that you unify our government, yes. that you bring them in together, Father, that they can work for the people and for the good of this country. And Lord, we also lift up our governor, our Father, Assistant Governor, Lord God, also, Father, every local official, we lift them all up before you, and we thank you for their wisdom. We thank you that you keep us in peace because we pray for them. That's your promise to us, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Bob. Amen. If you have your little wafer, be ready. I'm going to Lead us in the part for the wafer and then Bob, I'm going to ask you to lead us in the blood of Jesus okay. that washes away our sins. Hold your little wafer there. Hopefully, you know, maybe you got a piece of matzah there or, or a little piece of bread. And just say this with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, thank you today I thank you today that the body of Jesus Christ, that the body of Jesus Christ was, broken for me. was broken for me. You said... You <clears throat> by your stripes, by your stripes, we are made whole. We are made whole. We break this little bread, and we remember Thank you, Lord. that the body was broken for me. Thank you, Jesus, and my loved ones, and the church family tonight. Yes, we receive it by faith. Yes, understanding the covenant. Thank you, Lord, that we have with you in Thank Jesus, you, Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Lord. And then, Lord, we thank you. This blood, this covenant, this grape juice signifies the great covenant that Jesus gave us. That by his sacrifice, his blood, we were redeemed from sin. Our sin was not covered it was removed. Yes. As far as the east is from the west, it was removed. Yes. And I thank God Almighty that he thought of this great plan. Yes. Jesus, thank you for your willing sacrifice. We honor and we bless you as we partake of this. And you told us to remember you in this. So we remember your goodness right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
We bless you and thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. I pray for each and every person, Lord. No matter what they're going mm -hmm. through right now, we pray your shalom. Yes. We pray your peace, Lord. We pray your peace over homes and families right now. Thank you. We Lord. thank you that you are the God that's more yes, than enough. Lord. We love you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God is good. Go get your Bibles. Get a pen, paper. We're going to dig into the word of God today. Amen? Amen. God bless. Well, hello, welcome to CFFC Online. I'm Brandy, and I want to thank you for joining us here today. So every service here at CFFC, we say our vision together, so let's go ahead and do that. So we are a praying church. We are a going church, and we are a life-changing church. And we're reaching and impacting people with the love of Jesus. Hey, with making that statement, why don't you go ahead this week and share this service right there in your Facebook feed or maybe do a watch party? You never know who might need to hear something about this service or about Jesus Christ, amen? So let's do that together. So we have a few things going on with our children and our teens. So Miss Ashley, every Sunday, she puts a new lesson up and there's some interactive things going on. She always has a great video. So parents go to that Life Children's page on our Facebook page and check that out. Also, teens, four o'clock on Thursdays and Sundays, they have their online service, doing an awesome job with that. Uh, Tuesday nights is their nightly news, great time. You wanna check that out, it's a lot of fun. Also, if you have any questions, you have any comments, you need a uh, prayer, you know, someone that maybe needs a, a prayer request or send those in right through cffchurch.org. We miss you guys. We're hoping that this lifts soon so that we can get back together. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless. Hey, church family. Let's continue to worship by the giving of his tithes and our offerings because we are a giving church. And here's the ways that we can give. You can go to our church you can go to cffchurch.org and click Donate tab at the top of the page or the link on this video. You can give on our CFFC app. You can text to give by texting the amount to 84321 or mail your check or cash to 3188 Route 94, Franklin, New Jersey, 07416. Today, I'd like to look at uh, the scripture verse from Leviticus 2322. I think there's a real great principle here that we can apply to our tithes and offerings. Here it is right now. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field when you reap, nor shall you gather any gleaning from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Why did God tell the Israeli farmers not to harvest the whole field? You know, it didn't make a lot of business sense because, in essence, you're leaving money on the ground there, right? But if you notice, they still planted their seed right to the edges of the field, but they didn't harvest it all. I believe God was trying to teach them something. Always leave space for God, okay? Our tithing is just like that. We don't need to hold tightly to every dollar that we make. Instead, like the Israeli farmers, we need to give the corners to him. This is where the real blessing is. And in giving, giving room for God to move, it opens up possibilities for him to bless us and others. Amen? Let's bless this offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that we have the ability to give today, Father. You have blessed us abundantly, Lord. We just give you back a portion, Father, of what you give us, Lord. But, Father, may, us, may we always think of others, Lord, in our lives, God. Let us keep those corners open for you, Father. Help us to bless others, Lord, as we are blessed. And I thank you for that opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, church family, God is good. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us. Thank you for doing watch parties and inviting people. Look, here's what we want to do. We want to get people born again. Amen. Because the Bible says when the number of the Gentiles is fulfilled, we are going home. We are the Gentiles. We need to get it out there. Let people know. Amen. Again, if you're by the church, don't forget we have all these free items out there. 
We have the Psalm 91 cards on order. Hopefully they're going to be in real soon. Amen? You got your Bibles tonight? Well, let's do Psalm 91 first together. It'll be on the bottom of the screen. We'll read it together. Amen? Psalm 91, the easy reading version. I can go to God most high to hide. I can go to God all powerful for protection. I say to the Lord, you are my place of safety, my fortress, my God, I trust in you. God will save me from hidden dangers and deadly diseases. Say amen on that one. Amen, amen. I can go to him for protection. He will cover me like a bird spreading its wings over its baby. I can trust him to surround and protect me like a shield. I will have nothing to fear at night and no need to be afraid of the enemy's arrows during the day. <clears throat> I will have no fear of diseases that come in the dark or terrible suffering that come at noon. A thousand people may fall dead at my side or 10,000 right beside me, but nothing bad will happen to me. All I will have to do is watch and I will see that the wicked are punished. I trust in God. My, I trust in the Lord for protection. I have made God most high my place of safety. So nothing bad will happen to me. No disease will come near my home. He will command his angels to protect me wherever I go. Their hands will catch me so that I will not hit my foot on a rock. I will have power to trample on, on lions and poisonous snakes. And then I love verse 14, 15, and 16. The Lord said, if someone trusts me, I will save them. I will protect my followers who call to me for help. When my followers call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them when they are in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will give my followers a long life and show them my power to save. Can I get an amen there? Would you mind putting an amen in the comments? Amen. You know, church, what is this, our fourth week or so, third, fourth week, whatever it is, of this online. It's different. I, I literally said to myself, Tom, are you going to be ready to preach to people again? It's kind of, this is so different. This, I've been ministering now for over 27 years, and nothing like this has ever happened before. So it's going to be interesting that first Sunday that we come together again. Are they going to require us to have masks on? Are we going to be allowed to shake hands? I don't know. I really don't care. I just want to get together again. Can I get an amen out there in online, internet, cloud land out there? Give me an amen there. Put a thumbs up. Put a couple hearts. Church is so, so important. Again, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, especially as the day draws near. Amen. So looking forward to it. Hey, I'll be real honest with you. I would rather meet together in the sky. Wouldn't that be so much better? Let that trumpet sound. Let the dead in Christ rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with him. Comfort ye one another with these words. Sound good? I want you to turn over to Psalm 91. You know, we quote this all the time, but I figured, you know, maybe for the next couple weeks, we just dig a little bit into this psalm. Why are we speaking it? Why are we saying it? This is a powerful psalm. Amen? In verse 1, it says this, Psalm 91. I'm going to read from the New King James. I'll give you some different translations. We'll put them up on the screen. He who dwells, go ahead and underline the word dwell, dwells in the secret place, underline the word secret place, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow, underline the word shadow, of the Almighty. So Psalm 91 is a promise of God's favor and protection to those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Look, this is not for everybody. This is for those that are committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe with all my heart, you wouldn't be online right now if you weren't committed to our Lord Jesus Christ. So then this psalm applies to you and applies to my household. Amen? So this psalm is for those who dwell there. Dwell where? In the secret place of the Most High. What's the secret place of the Most High? Jesus Christ. Amen? He is our secret place. He is the Most High God. Now, this is talking about those that are making a decision to dwell there 
and not just visit there. Oh, yeah, you know, I serve God when everything is going good. Or I serve God when everything is going bad and I need a, a quick answer to prayer. I thank God that his grace is always sufficient. But this, this psalm here is for those that want, may have made that decision or are making that decision to dwell, to abide, to hang out with God. Amen? Or abiding in Christ. This word dwell comes from the, the Hebrew word yashab, Y-A-S-H-A-B. And it means, look at, look at the meaning of this word, to sit down, to remain, or to settle. So notice that the very first thing that God wants you to do to enjoy his protection is to hang out with him, to rest in him. Look, in a, in a good relationship, a husband and wife relationship, there's not that, you know, walking on eggshells, that feeling. You can rest. You can, you can lay on the lazy boy and not, oh, oh, she's in the room now. I better, I better do this. I better do that. And, and, you know, sometimes with God, that's the way we feel. Oh, you know, God saw that. I, I made a mistake. Look, God knows the mistakes you made before you made them. He knew it 100 years before you made them. God knows the past, the present, and the future. Look, he loves us. He's a good, good father. As a dad, you know, I wasn't the perfect dad. And, you, you know, you're, you're kind of looking for when your kids make a mistake so you can correct them. Look, we should be looking for when our kids do good things, not when they make mistakes, because as children, they're going to make mistakes. I made mistakes. You made mistakes. We all made mistakes. Look, the blood of Jesus Christ washes us from all sin. We just received communion that, that spoke about the blood of Jesus, the remission of sins, church family. And again, remission is so much bigger than just atonement. Atonement brought forth a covering of sin. Remission brings forth a washing away of sins. Why is it so hard for us to just receive this? I know everything we do in our Christian walk has to be by faith. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And it's the same way. Oh, I blew it. God's mad at me. Well, what kind of God do you think we serve that he's mad at us every time we make a mistake? Dear Lord, he's got to be mad every moment because somewhere on planet Earth, someone's making a mistake. No, the Lord is long-suffering. He knows our frame. He knows what we're made out of, that we're but flesh. Look, we're not in our perfect body yet, but we are perfect on the inside because of Jesus Christ. We are complete in him who is the head. Amen? He is the head. I am in him today, so all I got to do is just accept that, and I need to dwell in the secret place. The secret place of his protection is his rest, his protection, his peace, his love, his other blessings flow in our life when we come to that place of rest. You know, you think about Jesus Christ or the place of abiding. Jesus said, hey, look at the birds. They don't toil. They don't spin. Look at the lilies. But your heavenly Father takes care of them. Church family, he's taking care of me. He's taking care of you. Quit saying, you know, surely bad things are going to come my way. Say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Look, we have to learn the power of confession. We have to learn the power of of declaring who we are because of what Christ Jesus has done. Again, the great in him principle, what Jesus has done, we have received. Amen, church family? Quit thinking, I got to earn this. If you're going to get into earn, you're going to get into pre-reformation. Pre-reformation was, oh, if I gave money into this, uh, whatever they called it, the coffer or whatever, then, then my, my family member who died will be taken out of hell or whatnot. I'm not going to get into the theology here. What I'm trying to say is stop trying to earn your salvation. Start learning to enjoy what the Lord is giving you. He's a good, good father. We sing all these songs. Let's believe them. Can I get an amen? Go ahead and type there, right there in comments. I want you to write in, he's a good, good Abba. He's a good, good father. If you want to say it, he's a good, good daddy. That's who he is. That's what the Bible says. We're to call him Abba, Father. Amen? So this place of rest comes 
in dwelling in Jesus Christ or abiding in him. I want you to go over to John chapter 15. And we're going to look at this abiding because I read to you that, that, that story by Hudson Taylor, you know, he, a powerful missionary of God. And here he was living in defeat, living with the blahs, even though he saw great things happening. But inside there was no contentment until he understood that it's not about him, it's about abiding in him, letting God, letting God be everything in his life. And I think it's the same with us. We try so much to earn God's favor, God's goodness, and God is saying, would you just let me spoil you? Would you just let me form Christ in you? Would you just let me be an Abba to you, a daddy to you, a father to you? Watch what Jesus says here. In verse 15, beginning with verse 1, this is the New King James. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Oh, see, pastor, if I don't bear fruit, God doesn't love me. No, I've taught on this before. There was that great book, uh, oh, by, by, uh, oh, I forgot what, Abiding in the Vine, I think it was, that, that explained that the Greek here is not saying he's going to cast you away. What it means is the wise farmer, he goes and when he sees the vine on the ground, he picks it up. And he puts it back on. He washes the mud off it. Why is that? Because the wise farmer knows there's profit in the vine. The wise farmer knows that the vine, that the branch, that we, the branches that are on the ground, that he needs to lift them up and use those branches. Amen? Because it's through the branches that the grapes come, that the, the harvest can come. Amen? Listen, Jesus is the vine. The Father is the vine dresser. And we are the branches. So when we make a mistake, he doesn't cast us out. He lifts us up. Say that with me. I am being lifted up. Well, type it in. The Father lifts me up. Some of you are sitting right there right now, and you just live it in guilt. Come on, church family. I've been teaching this for 27 years. There is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. I am free. Why? Because of Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation because of him. In myself, there is plenty of condemnation. I make enough mistakes for all of us, amen? But in Jesus, I am free. And whom the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. When I do that, that means to type it in there. Free in the deed. Every branch in me, verse 2, that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, watch what he does. He prunes it so it may bear more fruit. The Father wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to be full of love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, uh, long-suffering. You know, the nine fruits of the Spirit. So what does he do? He prunes us. He works on us. He wants Christ to be formed in us. You know, this life can be miserable at times. Would you agree with me on that? It can be hard. It can be rough. But there's a purpose in this life. It does a work in us. And you know what? I don't understand it all and why some people have to go through this and why some people go through that. I don't understand it all. All I know is I serve a good, good father. He loves me. He wants to bear fruit in me. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Every good and perfect gift is from above. The Bible says in Acts 10.38 how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing everyone, everyone that was oppressed of the devil. So I know sickness is not of God. I know poverty is not of God. All these things, they're under the curse, but we have to learn how to get out of them. And God's ways are not our ways, amen? God is not a man. God is not a man. God is a spirit. And we have to learn his ways, amen? So really, if I'm fighting in these areas, learn the ways of God, amen? All right, let's keep going on. Verse 3 says, you are already clean 
because of the word which I have spoken to you. So the word of God cleans us. The word of God is our soap. The word of God, in fact, doesn't it say, I believe it's Peter that says it's by the washing of the water by the word. Peter also says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby. So it's powerful, guys. This word has cleansing power. The, the New Testament, the word of God, has the power of God within it to wash you, to clean you, amen? And now in verse four, we're talking about dwelling. We're just looking at that one word, dwelling. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, this abiding in Jesus does what? It causes us to bear fruit. And herein is the Father glorified that we bear much fruit. The fruit isn't just to glorify God. The fruit is to have peace in your life. You know, I watch people right I'm in such fear. You shouldn't be in fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Pastor, don't condemn me. I'm not condemning you. I'm trying to help you come up. If I just say, oh, it's okay, just stay in that fear, what good is that going to do you? I've struggled with fear. I've struggled with anxieties. I've had stress in my life. I have felt that people have come against me and things like that. I, I got to fight it. We all got our own battles. But I want to get into that promised land. And if the children of Israel could get into that promised land and they didn't get in by just sitting around, they got in by marching in, amen? We can get into our promised land to you. So Jesus said that we cannot bear fruit unless we abide in him. Make a decision. How do I do that? Every day just say, Jesus, I love you. I'm going to hang out with you today. When your mind starts drifting and it'll try to drift, no, Jesus, I love you. I'm keeping my mind Stayed, stayed on him. Come on, a scripture we looked at a couple weeks ago. You remember that? Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. It's making that decision to keep your mind more focused on the things of God than the things of this world. Oh, but pastor, we got the coronavirus, COVID-19. You know, we got this and that. Yeah, but you know what? Wednesday, I got a check in the mail from the government. That's going to sure help me during this time. You know what? God is going to provide for all of our needs. God will take care of us. Amen? Look, I'm not going to get all freaked out. God is going to take care of us. He's taking care of them birds. You know me. I go for a prayer walk every morning. Even when it's chicky outside, I even get an umbrella and I go for a prayer walk. The only time I don't go is when it's really stormy that I can't get out there. And the thing I've noticed, especially in the past few weeks, the robins are out. Man, they're like all over the place. The other day I saw a cardinal out there. So beautiful. Today as I was walking, I saw a, a big uh, hawk out there. I'm still waiting to see eagles. I get to see them every once in a while. Not as often, but I'll get to see them also. Do you see where I'm going here? You know what? That hawk, there'll be a little mouse out there that'll feed that hawk. You know those robins? There'll be little worms out there to feed those robins. You know those birds out there? There'll be little uh, seeds out there to feed them. And for my wife, the hummingbird lady, she, she feeds them, amen. Haven't seen any yet, but we know they'll be coming out real soon as she hangs up her, her little gizmo out there for the hummingbirds. Hey, God takes care of the hummingbirds. He takes care of the birds. You know what? We take care of the birds. We put out bird seed and, and that sweet uh, stuff that we put out. God will take care of it. He'll use people to help you. He'll use uh, that stimulus check that came out, whatever it is. God will use different ways to take care of you. Church family, receive this as a word from the Lord. Ready? Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to work out. It's not fun to me, for me right now preaching to an empty church, to empty chairs. I love watching the expression on people's face. I love when the Holy Spirit uh, hits somebody and all of a sudden you just see their, their eyes light up. I love when the Holy Spirit's working through the congregation. You know what? Can't do it right now in these seats but he can sure do it in the internet right now. He can sure do it on Facebook Live or YouTube or our, our uh, website or our app, whatever way that you're watching right now. 
He can still do it. Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. Let the Holy Spirit work on you right now. Let him show you peace when there is no peace in the world. We brought out Wednesday night about the, uh, uh, the, 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 the last generation that says that people's hearts will fail them because of the fear that they're seeing in the heavens and the oceans and all. And you know what? Suicides are going up. It doesn't have to be with us. It doesn't have to be with us. Why? Because we're making a decision to dwell in the secret place. Look, I said it at the beginning. This is not for everybody. It can be for everybody, but many people aren't choosing to let it be for them. So what do we need to do? Abide in him. Dwell in him. Say, Lord, I'm going to hang out with you. Give me your peace. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Come on, parents. Are you letting your kids just watch TV all day long? Dear Lord, the Bible says, um, oh, great will be the peace of our children because they are taught of the Lord. Are you doing a little devotion with them? Come grab the devotional right here. It's free. Take it home. Read it. It's two minutes. Oh, they don't have an at attention span. It's because you're not letting them have an, uh, an attention span. You say you're going to sit here for five minutes and we're going to read the Bible. We're going to read the stories about Jesus. Don't go read in Deuteronomy to them. Read the Gospels to them. Read what the Lord is doing in their lives. Find some scriptures and read it together with them. Don't let them just be playing games all day long. Get the Word of God in their heart. You can go on Prime and other places. Super books are out there. I believe they're on Prime for free. There's many good Christian cartoons that are out there that they can be watching. Amen. I wanted my children to have peace in their life. And I've even watched my kids as they struggle with things that have come against them, yet they still have peace. What is our peace? It is the assurance of knowing that our Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. It is my blessed hope. No matter, they can kill me right now. Somebody can walk in, be pretty hard to walk in the doors right now, but walk into the church and just shoot me. And the Bible says it would be far better for me. I'd be with the Lord. It might not be better for others that I'm still teaching the word to. Paul says it's still better that I stick around. But all I'm trying to say is, what's the worst that this world can do to me? Kill me? I'd be in the presence of God? I don't have to think about a mortgage payment anymore? I don't have to think about any aches or pains in my body? Dear Lord, come Lord Jesus, come. Amen. I am the vine, verse 5. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing or I like saying it like this you can do nothing of spiritual significance amen that's what I want I want to abide in the blessings of the Lord Deuteronomy chapter 28 I want the blessings of the Lord and I want the curse to be removed from me and my my home amen I mean when you read Deuteronomy chapter 20 I think I believe starts in verse 16 there that all them curses will come upon you for not obeying the law. My Bible says in Galatians 3.13, many of you know it, just say it out there. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse for me, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessings of Abraham may come upon us Gentiles. Read about those blessings of Abraham. Open up your Bible. It's your covenant. It's your will. It's your testament. And find out what those blessings are. Amen? Listen, a person can be born again without abiding in Christ. Well, what do you mean by that? You're born again. Being born again is the simplest thing, guys. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. You and your house, household. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's it. That's it. If you believe on Jesus, you're going to heaven. In fact, the Bible says some people will be saved as if by fire. But they just made it in. They're not in hell's fires. They just made it in. But they made it in. Amen? I don't want to just make it in. Would you type that in there? I don't want to just make it in. I want to live a victorious, abundant Christian life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly that's the life I want to live here in this earth and also I want to bear fruit 
I want to help others get into the kingdom. I want others to grow. Oh, you don't know how it blesses my heart. You know, each morning and each evening I do the pastor's prayer and update. And some of you write comments and pastor, I've learned so much through this. Pastor, thank you. So you don't know how that blesses my heart to know that I am being a blessing to others. You know, our statement that we make at the end of service, and we'll do it again today. I am blessed to be a blessing. The anointing in my life, the gift that God has given me to be a pastor teacher, to have the ability to teach God's word and to pastor a local flock. I'm not here to pastor the world. I'm here to pastor Christian Faith Fellowship Church. That's the joy of my heart, guys. That's the Oh, don't get me. I love my family. I love my Rebecca. I love my, my, my Jennifer. I love my Daniel, their mates and their children, my grandchildren. I love Diane, but I love being your pastor also. I love sharing the word of God, which I love shaking your hand. Will we be able to do that right off the bat when we get together? I don't know what they're going to allow us to do. We're going to be wise. We're going to use common sense. Amen. But boy, I'm looking forward to getting together again, even just to see your, see your face, to see your eyes. Amen. So a person can be born again without abiding in Christ. Come on, guys. Go to that next level. Dwell in that secret place of the Most High. Abide in Jesus. You'll love it. I love it. Amen. All right. Let's look at the next word here. Let me go back to the scripture. He who dwells the next work uh, in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. I want to look at that word shadow. That word shadow in the Hebrew is the word to sell, T-S-E-L. And this is interesting when I look this up. I thank God for good commentaries and stuff that you can study with other men and women of God from the past and even today. But it, it, it translates into the word defense, defense. Those continually trusting in the Lord will have him as their defense. Woo! I love it, man. That's the shield that's around us. That's the, the force field for those that are into science fiction. The force field that's around us. That, you know, what, what is that scripture? Uh, uh, our shield of faith, which shall quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In Numbers 14, 9, I'm reading this from the King James now. It says this, Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Coronavirus, we're not going to fear you. Now, I'm not going to tempt the Lord, my God. Jesus taught us that when he was in the, 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 uh, the, the wilderness, when the devil said to him, you know, jump, jump, go ahead and jump, because, you know, it says the angels have charge over you, over you. And Jesus says, don't tempt the Lord thy God. Let's be smart, amen. I'm not, if somebody said to me, well, I have COVID-19, I'm not going to go up to him and say, why don't you go ahead and cough on me, because I'm a mighty man of God. I got some brains, too. Use some common sense. Two, amen. But I love in the strong, strong concordance, and many of you have that, that word is also for shadow is defense or shade as protection. Mm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. But I want, I want to stick with just this one part here. Go over to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9. I want to show you something. Glory to God. Now remember, the secret place was what? Abiding in him, in that secret place, or abiding in Jesus. I love what it says here in Colossians 2, 9. It says, for in him... That's our identification. That's our, 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 substitu our substitution. That's being one with him. Watch what it says. For in him dwells all. What does all mean, Pastor? All. Yeah, I love it. He that, uh, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Oh, what's God like? What's the Holy Spirit like? Real simple. What was Jesus like? That's all you got to do. Don't get all theological on this. Don't get all, I got to know doctrine. I go to know. Thank God for doctrine. 
But here it is real simple. Are you ready? He who has seen Jesus has seen God. He who has seen Jesus has seen the Holy Spirit. Make it that simple. What was Jesus like? Did Jesus heal people? Yes, God heals people. The Holy Spirit heals people. Did Jesus provide? Yes, he provided loaves and fishes for people. God provides for us. The Holy Spirit provides for us. Was Jesus loving and kind? Come on, come on. Let the little children come on to me and forbid them not. For as such is the kingdom of heaven, guys. Do you see what I'm trying to say here? John the Beloved laid his head on the bosom of, of, of the creator of the universe. And all it's saying is in, in Jesus, you see, you know, flesh. You see humanity. In Jesus, the deity, you see inside a body. So it makes it very easy because God is a spirit. No man has seen God. But I've seen Jesus. I mean, I haven't had a vision of Jesus, but I see him on his word, and I see how he saw one day a mother crying because her child died. And he said, this ain't happening on my watch. Stop. And he raised that child from the dead. I see Jesus. One day a leper came up to him and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me whole. And Jesus said, I will be thou made whole. That's how I see Jesus. How do you see Jesus today? Well, I don't really see him yet. Well, when you see him, then you're going to see God the Father and you're going to see God the Holy Spirit and you're going to say, wow, I serve a good, good father. It's who he is. It's who he is. Amen? I'll keep going on. For in him, in Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead body and you, say me, type it in there, me, we are what? Complete in him. Complete in him. Come on, say that. I am complete in him. I am complete in Jesus. Oh, I'm not complete. There's still so much work on me. Yes, you are. When you are in him, you are complete in him. That's our substitute. That's our identification. We used to sing a song. I identify. I identify. Because I need to know as he is, so are we in this world. I need to understand that greater is he that's in me that, than he that's in the world. I need to get into my little peewee brain that I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But there is a plate. Oh, let me finish that scripture. We are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. Just say that there. I'm complete in him. Not in Tom, not in pastor, not in the Pope, not in this person or that. I am complete in Jesus Christ, who is the head of all principalities and powers. But there is a place of staying in him. And you're going to have to write in after I make this statement, Pastor, we still love you. And I believe that place of staying in him is walking the love walk. That's truly abiding in him. I like how it says in 1 John 4, 7 and 8, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. You notice it didn't say God uses love or God gets love once in a while. No, it says God is love. If somebody wants to put a definition, G-O-D, what's the definition of God? It's real simple. It's L-O-V-E. It's love. God is love. When we hang out in love, when we say, Lord, today, I endure long, Lord, and I am patient and kind. I am not touchy, fretful, or resentful. I take no account of the evil done to me. I pay no attention to a suffered wrong. I believe the best in other people. Come on, guys. These are just some of the statements that it says about love. When we say we want to walk in love and we start becoming love people, when we see the best in people, when we go the extra mile with people, God dwells very close with us. Amen? So that dwelling in God, making it that secret place in him, dwelling in him, understanding him, understanding this shadow in him, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God. 
it goes a long way. Amen? One more. Let's look at one more. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. So we saw dwell, we saw shadow of the Almighty. I want us to go back to that secret place. The secret place. In the Hebrew word, it's the word sent her. C-E-T-H-E-R. Which means secret place or hiding place. <laughs> Man, I used to love as a kid when we used to play hide and go seek. Come on, you used to try to find that spot where nobody can find you. And then sometimes they didn't find you so long that you got nervous and you said, here I am, here I am. Secret place or hiding place. Pastor, you always seem to have fun. When I'm preaching the word of God, it brings great delight to me. Studying the word of God is harder than when you let it come out of you. Amen. When you're sharing it with other people. And I just believe the hundreds of you out there that are abiding in the vine, that are dwelling in him, we just soak this kind of stuff in. We're kind of this elite group that just wants more and more of God. Remember it says, I believe it's in Malachi, those that fear, those that reverence the Lord, they have a special mark on their head. They are preserved for the Lord. That's what I want. I want to be one of God's special kids. How about you? Amen? Come on, let's get through this. We've got a little time left. So I want us to look at this, this word secret place or hiding place in a different scripture. Go over to Psalm 27 and verse 1. Psalm 27 and verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Very familiar scripture, so, so powerful, right? The Lord, he is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I'm not going to fear no devil. I'm not going to fear no principality. I'm not going to fear man. Now, don't get me wrong. Fear comes against us. But like I shared Wednesday night, I've been really working on what it tries to get into my gut. Because when it gets in my gut, Sometimes it goes on three, four, five days. Not the fear, just that yuck, that God in there, whatever that is, that digest. I've been working on that in my own life. I'm not going to let fear, anxiety, stress in. Everything's going to be okay. Pastor, you got nobody in your church right now. Everything's okay. Thank you for all that you guys done. Sending in your tithes, your offerings. And we're doing our part, getting the word, making connection. I watched John Rich put my legs out there, him and Troy, the other day. Check it out. Go to Next Gen's website. Check it out. We're just have, doing some stuff to have fun with your teens. I'm listening to your teens, sharing scripture, sharing thoughts, sharing psalms. I'm listening to these guys teach on the teen level, young adult level. I'm listening to Miss Ashley as she's sharing stuff with the children, her team, Danielle, Alisa, Troy on John's team, and just watching this come together. Guys, I'm going to be real honest with you. We're going to come out better than we came in. I believe we're going to come out more devout to the Lord, more in love with Jesus Christ, more consistent. I pray that after we're done with this, that church will become more valuable to you, that you won't wake up in the morning and say, oh, it's a beautiful day. I'm just going to go out and enjoy the day that you're going to say, you know what? I remember those four, five, six, seven weeks, whatever this turns out, that I wasn't allowed in the house of the Lord, in the, in the church. I'm getting back in church today. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies, my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing, one uno, one thing I desire to the Lord, that will I seek. What did David desire of the Lord? What do I desire the Lord? What do you desire the Lord? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's my greatest desire. I want to be one of those elders around the throne of God, putting my crowns down before him, amen? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Woo! In the secret place of his tabernacle, of his dwelling. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Come on, church family. That's where I want to be. I don't want fear. I don't want 
the enemy, all that. I want the goodness of the Lord all around me. Again, verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Those are the things I want of the Lord. Those are the things that, that I want of God. Amen, church family? I, I can't believe we just got through one verse in this half an hour that we've been together. But boy, those are three powerful words. Dwell, abide in that vine. Secret place, this secret place of our God hiding in his tabernacle. Come on, church family, talk to me. That's a, that's a good secret place, amen, or hiding place. And number three, shadow, amen, shadow of the most high God. I hope you got something out of this today. God's word is rich. God's word is true, amen. Church family, I love you. I mean, each morning I'm there for you. I'm putting out that prayer time every day. I get up early. I do that. I put it as a premiere so you can see when it's coming. So it might be in an hour, a half an hour. I kind of set that up so it helps you to, to get it right during that time or any time. Prayer in the word is anointed. I give out a scripture, little update. In fact, the other day I put some jokes out there. You know, we're going to stay lighthearted through this uh, coronavirus time. A Amen, church family. And I'm there with you in the morning, in the evening. We're there for prayer for you. Just call the church number 973-209-7786. We check the phone each day or Rev Bob, R-E-V, Reverend R-E-V-B-O-B at cffchurch.org. Or again, stop by the church, get some prayer cards that are there. We have free devotionals there for you. We got the, the prayer maps. These maps are so good. I use this thing just about every day. Right here, it has a picture of our president and our vice president, the Supreme Court, Mitch McConnell, the head, the majority leader of the Senate, Nancy Pelosi, the, the House uh, Speaker, the leader of the House. But then on the inside, it's got the map of the United States of America that you can take that and you can pray each day. It has all different areas to pray for. You can take them and pray each day. Those are out there. They're free for you guys. And also we have out there the world map and it has every, you know, President Trump said the other day, I believe it's 185 nations right now. The coronavirus has come again against right now. We have 216 nations in our world. They're all named there that you can go ahead and pray over the different nations. Those that ask for, are there envelopes that we can mail in our tithes, our offerings? We have envelopes out there for you so you can grab those. Also take a little, whatever you need, Take them with you and uh, do, be, be led to, by the Lord. Just so you know, each week we have been sending in a big check to Samaritan's Purse because they are working intensely with the coronavirus. But I don't know if you guys saw the other day, there were some intense storms through the whole South there that, you know, from South Carolina, the Mississippis, Tennessee, they got hit with some tornadoes. They're, they're out there with their teams helping in those areas. So we're supporting works like that. Also, amen, church family. Hey, would you bow your heads with me so that, that I can pray for you right now? Listen, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you're on Judy's watch par party or Bob's watch party or, or this par person's watch party or my watch party, if you never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, look, I'm not trying to get you to change your religion. I'm trying to get you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you have never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, would you pray this prayer with me? And everyone there, say it out loud. My Lord Jesus, I believe today that you have come into the world, that you died on the cross, that you shed your blood for me. My Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins and accepting me now into your kingdom. I thank you that I am born again. If you're making that decision for the very first time today, please let us know. Call in the church or call or, or text, uh, write in Rev Bob 
at cffchurch.org, R-E-V-B-O-B, at cffchurch.org. And we'd like to communicate with you, help you on your new adventure in Christ. Amen. Church family, I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank you again for the love you're showing us. And I believe, believe with me, church family, I love you dearly. And I send you my love today. Let me pray a prayer blessing over you. Father, I pray for every person that's listening right now for your blessing upon them. I thank you, Father, that you that has begun the good work in us, you'll bring it to completion. I thank you, Father, that you love us dearly and that your shalom is going upon your people, your goodness is going upon your people. I thank you, Father, for it. I thank you, Father, that you, the Lord, you bless us and keep us. You, the Lord, you make your face shine upon us and you are gracious to us that you, the Lord, lift up your confidence upon us and you give us your peace. Now say this with me. I thank you, Father, that you have made me the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. In all our ways and endeavors, we are greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved, that we are blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Hope to see you again on Wednesday night or on midweek service. Again, if you haven't been getting my updates, they're on Facebook there, that you can get them. They're there every morning and every evening. Just little words that I speak out to you to bless you as you go forth in your day and just before you go to sleep at night. God bless you. Love you, church family. See you soon.